1937, The Brotherhood, a secret society seeking world domination, plots a global war to rule all mankind. Only one man, once their most trusted agent trained in their secret arts, now their most feared enemy, can stop them. He is Agent 13, a master of disguise, strategy, and all forms of combat. He and his secret team of operatives race to prevent the skull-faced Hand Sinister, leader of the Brotherhood, from manipulating the world's leaders into an all-out war. No one knows his true name, only that he lives up to his reputation as the Midnight Avenger. Hello and welcome back to this damn Philadelphia Crusade. This will be a book review of, of something I sort of stumbled across and just totally fell in love with. And especially since there is a beautiful reprint collection, I had to get it and just delve deeply into the world of Agent 13, the Midnight Avenger. Uh, this was a series originally started in 1986 with the first book volume by Flint Dill and David Marconi. They were uh, aspiring screenwriters and were also had worked in comics. And uh, this sort of the idea germinated for doing a complete throwback to classic pulp adventures of pulp magazines, uh, something they wanted to make into a film and sort of pitched it around and then uh, eventually decided when they had uh, had connections with the TSR company and were working on classic role-playing games uh, to turn it into a role-playing game and then write essentially the the book version of the story and then there was also a comic adaptation as well so this original volume came out in 1986 the midnight avenger was followed by book two the serpentine assassin and then the final book in the trilogy uh, acolytes of darkness which itself is quite a rare book uh, i stumbled across this a little while ago in a used bookshop and the cover alone just screamed a classic pulp adventure and it just looked too entertaining for words so of course i started it and i simply could not put it down this is without question uh, one of the absolute great pulp throwback adventures uh, of, uh, you know, of the past few decades. Uh, very much inspired, obviously, by the success had with Raiders of the Lost Ark and the rest of the Indiana Jones trilogy, but definitely something with its own unique uh, vibe and atmosphere. This is fully adhering to the classic pulp magazine stories, and it takes direct inspiration, not just from Indiana Jones and some James Bond elements but very very heavily drawing from the classic shadow spider and doc savage pulps really the sort of holy trinity if you will of the classic pulp adventure stories and it does so in a way that is not simply repeating elements it is a complete love letter to the classic pulp adventure stories and being a fan of of all of these things already and a fan of the great 1990s pulp adventure throwback films uh, including dick tracy and the rocketeer and the shadow and the phantom and a fan of all of those characters anyway uh it was really interesting and amazing to see somebody having done that but really going back to the source, showing their love for the classic pulp magazines and translating that hard, tough, two-fisted adventure style into something that was new, but constantly is giving a tip of the hat, a wink of the eye, and acknowledging how truly important the pulp adventure stories are to pretty much every form and genre, but particularly to, to comics. And you could tell the writers really had a love for this material. They completely came up with a new adventure of their own with its own unique identity that, again, you can recognize the references and the elements that are carried over from the classic characters, but it is still its own unique thing. So it's not constantly relying on and falling back on the references it uses them to pepper in to create this this world so again you are sucked in entirely by the first story which ends on a total cliffhanger and then you immediately want to jump to the second volume and then that ends on a cliffhanger too and then the third volume rounds out the trilogy uh, again I, I know the first book was adapted into a comic which you can find and uh, then you, there was the role-playing game as well but I think it's still largely based around the trilogy of stories. Um, now 
now that I've read all three, I'm, I'm just finding myself wanting more because it's such a fun reading experience. So again, you do have to either track down the original books, which uh, they're, they're not, at least the first two books aren't super rare. They do turn up, but they will cost you about 10 or $20 for a nice paperback copy. I was, or if you were lucky like me, you'll stumble across one in a used bookshop and that'll entice you into checking it out. However, the publisher Pulp 2.0 Press has done a really lovely and extremely affordable trilogy collection here in this nice thick trade paperback collection with brand new custom artwork, which is really nice and striking. Uh, this gives you all three books, which is really helpful because the third book, Acolytes of Darkness, is a very rare and expensive paperback. You would have to probably uh, buy a copy online from anywhere to 60 to 80 dollars or more just to finally complete the trilogy of stories so you can get the first two books pretty easily for 10 to 20 dollars but the third one will cost you much more so you can get all three in this nice volume plus custom interviews and exclusive extras and brand new artwork and it only lists for 16.99 and it's a print on demand book but that is frequently on sale so i got this for actually slightly under 15 dollars so again, it is print on demand, which means depending on where you get it from, uh, you know, it will have some some quirks and things. I got this from Barnes and Noble, and it's it's in pretty good shape, but it is a soft cover, so it's not hard cover. Again, this does have brand new exclusive extras, and it has new art inside. It has a little bit of art at breaking up these stories, but it has interviews with the creators and the the writers, of course, uh, and it has an interview with the original editor at TSR and how the project even came to be and how it was done and put together. And it's also got an interview with the man who decided to turn it into an internet radio series. So you can actually listen to this as an internet radio drama. I think they've done at least the first story, if not all three. And then there's even a sample of some script pages because to turn it into a radio drama that it did have to be slightly expanded upon and reformatted for radio drama and having more characters instead of just internal monologue like you get in the book itself. So this is a pretty hefty volume clocking in at almost 400 pages and in another nice touch uh, it does replicate the sort of style of a classic pulp magazine by having dual column pages now the one downside of this even though it's a great way to get all this material have these nice bonuses the custom art uh, as is unfortunately common with a lot of these print-on-demand books from smaller independent publishers uh, they don't always have the best proofreading in the world so unfortunately there are a number of annoying typos in this um, it's not it's not terrible you can very much get what it's supposed to be but it does happen with with enough frequency that you will notice it when reading uh, again the 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 significant savings of uh, getting one volume instead of getting the original three paperbacks and the the fun and uh, amazing writing will overcome that but you will have to put up with a number of rather annoying typos again it's it's not a, a, a crazy amount it's not a, a ton of typos but there are enough throughout all three books that it, it does get a bit frustrating but again you can always tell what the word was supposed to be and to be honest some of the typos are quite funny <laughs> in in what what the actual text then reads for that particular word that is misspelled or has a random symbol in it but that is something you will run into with a lot of these books where they obviously are you know doing it out of love and they don't have have a lot of time and money and they don't always have you know time or money to have somebody proofread the book so it is unfortunate but um, the, it doesn't detract from the overall experience all too much and getting this for 15 or 16 dollars as opposed to having to sink in probably at least a hundred dollars or more to get all three original paperbacks uh, is significant plus you get the art and extra interviews and bonus content i should of course mention the originals don't have any typos even though i just have one uh, of the original printings uh, i read this and then immediately wanted to go find the others and then uh, was bemoaning i was going to have to buy a, a copies on ebay for a lot and then discovered that this collection had been printed a couple years ago so i still recommend this as the way to go because everything in one volume but you will have to put up with those annoying typos unfortunately now 
talk a little bit about the character and the story and the world just to give you a general idea of, of what this is. So Agent 13 is essentially a, a, a Avenger of the classic pulp type. He definitely has elements of the shadow. He is a master of disguise. He is a very uh, closed off individual being raised in a secret society and then uh, eventually discovering that this secret society not only controls many aspects of the world in a background sort of way, but also is is being led with evil intentions and then breaks away, barely survives, and turns his entire life into a one-man army crusade for justice against the secret society of the Brotherhood. Uh, again, he has a master of disguise like the Shadow. He has various layers, almost like the Shadow Sanctum. He also has uh, attributes of the spider. He has a, a ring with a sort of magnesium flare that uh, when he kills or, or stops enemies, he brands his personal 13 mark into their foreheads like the spider and the spider's mark or uh, Zoro carving the Z into the flesh of his enemies uh, so that's another classic pull uh, he also has a team of assistants who are all characters in their own right uh, very much like the various classic characters the shadow and his agents uh, Doc Savage and his famous companions and of course there's quite a bit of Doc Savage in this where uh, they, you have the adventures and you have some science fiction elements and you have the globe trotting elements of all the classic pulp characters but again it's never directly just pulling bits and pieces and just acting like it's it's creating something new it is creating something new while incorporating little elements to f give that pulp flavor and show such devotion and care for the classic pulp characters and pulp writers and pulp stories. The uh, primary associates of Agent 13 that you come into contact with uh, are also slightly reminiscent of classic pulp types. Then there are um, other agents who are reminiscent of some of the uh, Agents of the Shadow, but chief and foremost among them is the is the great heroine of this series, Maggie Dar, who in and of herself deserves her own series. Uh, she's perhaps uh, best described as uh, two parts Margot Lane, two parts Lois Lane, and two parts complete and total badass. <laughs> so um, that that is the great joy of reading these. Not only do you have a great lead character with a great premise, but his girl Friday, his uh, his main companion, is totally worth her weight in gold and can carry the load herself. She is not a damsel in distress. She has a really dark and gritty backstory that uh, gets her into the world of Agent 13 that is uh, a fantastic character background. Again, no punches are pulled in these. Uh, it is as dark and gritty as a classic 30s pulp adventure magazine story. Um, it does not dilute any of that. But uh, the, the character interactions are wonderful, um, and it's, it's fun getting the byplay of the very human and honest and driven Maggie character with the very closed-off Agent 13 character who seems almost superhuman at points, like the classic Shadow character. And, uh, of course, when you have a female heroine who is uh, more comfortable holding a smoking Thompson submachine gun than she is being the damsel in distress, then automatically my my uh, interest level goes uh, into the stratosphere. Uh, so she is one of my all-time favorite female heroines in any story now, um, particularly in the realm of pulp stories. So that's one of, that was one of the great surprises of reading this series. Now, as you go along, it does venture w with into more and more elements of mysticism and the supernatural. It does start out relatively grounded, like, say, a shadow story. But as Shadow and Doc Savage and the Spider could do, uh, they, um, they, they do sometimes go into the elements of the supernatural, some more than others. I should also say that Maggie Dar is, is also rather reminiscent of, of the Spider's love interest, Nita Van Sloan, the, the great female heroine of the Spider Pulp. So, again... The, the characters themselves are also very much in the classic DNA of the classic pulp characters. 
But um, the the primary antagonist, the Hand Sinister, the leader of the Brotherhood, has a fantastic backstory and a great atmosphere. It definitely even has vibes of almost a um, an Emperor Palpatine type character from Star Wars, obviously. Um, but it, it, as the stories go on, as you get more and more of the Brotherhood and its inner workings and its sort of army of of mystically infused uh, uh, operatives, it does get more and more into the supernatural and ultimately the hand sinister has almost a sort of Raj al Ghul vibe from from Batman uh, so that sort of semi immortal character who has lived through time and is uh, an almost unbeatable foe you get that great sort of flavor and of course the stories have great amounts of globe trotting throughout and just like the Indiana Jones films they do interact with real things places and events in history and so you it's fun from a historical background so you get references to the Hindenburg to the SS Normandy uh, they go all over Europe they go to New York and Washington DC and again there's great globe trotting throughout but you also get that great historical vibe to it so ultimately I think this is one of the absolute greatest pulp throwback adventures that has ever been made I think it is incredibly well written it is so beautifully paced and full of great plot twists that pay perfect homage to the classic pulp stories that uh, you can't really put it down and it is glorious fun uh, in fact i would be hard pressed to to be able to name a better pulp throwback adventure that has existed post raiders of the lost ark uh, this is exceptional adventure storytelling it has something for everyone and it's it, the, each it, the first two books end on perfect cliffhangers that really draw you in to the next book and it is a wonderful fun reading experience i would encourage anyone to check these out and they are they are not uh stories that pull punches they definitely have a, a nice significant body count to them they do go into dark places and dark territory uh, there are some torture scenes as there are in most classic adventure stories uh, so while they do have the sort of feel of a classic republic adventure serial in ways uh, like the indie films they can go a bit darker so they are great for children and adults children who like classic adventures and are okay with <laughs> a little bit of darkness for a more realistic flavor so I, I again i cannot recommend these highly enough especially since you can get this complete trilogy volume for an, an absurdly cheap price of around fifteen dollars it's available on amazon barnes and noble any online book retailer is it has this for sale pretty much i think it's also available as an ebook if you're if you're a fan of reading on an e-reader instead uh, but it is i think without question the best adventure you can have for fifteen dollars i mean it's it's amazing uh and such great fun so as as much as i i love pulp throwbacks i i i can't really think of one that is a, a better executed experience overall than the agent 13 series this was an incredible surprise so much fun and i i cannot recommend this strongly enough if you're needing something adventurous to read if you want something fun to read again please get a copy of this it's absurdly cheap for 400 pages of pure pulp adventure and true fun and featuring one of the best female heroines i have ever encountered in fact you could read this and you can picture the movie version in your head as you're reading it it's that good and in fact apparently universal uh back a number of years ago in like 2012 or so acquired the rights to this and uh thought about making a feature version um i'm really glad they didn't because they would have totally screwed it up um i i i, I would love to see a film version of this at some point an agent 13 film uh, and basically all you need to do is just shoot the damn book literally just shoot it the way it is do not change a thing don't change a page don't change a word um, it would probably take you know three films to do each of the three stories or you'd have to condense it somehow if you're doing a single film but 
in any case, this is perfect as it is, and if if you tried to rewrite it, you would most likely ruin it. And so I am very glad that they didn't do that, but I assume they still have the rights. But uh, if, if anybody was to try and make a great adventure film, this would be a great place uh, to source from and just literally shoot the damn book as it is because it is that good. So that's why I wanted to talk about the Agent 13 series. Uh, again, this was a beautiful surprise, all because I decided to pick up the original book in a paperback bin when I was just drawn in by this beautiful cover artwork. So again, I think this is the best adventure you can have these days for $15. It's an amazing value. You will come back to this and reread it many, many times in the years to come. It is so much delirious fun, and it is a must for any fan of the classic pulp adventure stories, pulp characters, or even fans of just the Indiana Jones film series because this is the same shared DNA of love and affection for the iconic masterpieces that are the classic pulp adventure stories. So if you're interested in these or if you have fond memories of reading the Agent 13 stories in the past, I would love to hear your comments below. I adore reading more and learning more about not just the classic pulp stories but all the great pulp throwbacks that have uh, come to exist in the past few decades because uh, these, the, this whole realm of pulp adventure is something that unfortunately is not delved enough into and is so completely part of the backbone of so many elements of fiction in different media that we exist and take for granted today. And in a lot of ways, it has never been done better than it was in the pulp era. So uh, I was just blown away by how much fun and how well written these stories were. And that's why I wanted to talk about them some and try and hopefully encourage other people to check the, uh, check the books out for yourself and get the word out about this incredibly wonderful book trilogy, especially since you can now get them in this complete deluxe volume for such an inexpensive price. I think this belongs on anyone's bookshelf who loves adventure stories. So that's it for this particular video. Again, I just wanted to get the word out about Agent 13, and if you have uh, any memories of this series or this sounds interesting, I would love to hear your comments below. And I would just like to say, as always, definitely keep buying physical print books, keep reading books, keep reading, period, and thanks ever so much for watching.